Hello, John Talley here with Boats.net. Today we're going to be pulling the power head on our 2004 Yamaha F225. Now if you've seen any of the other videos in this series, you know that this motor is in serious trouble. We already did a leak down test as well as the standard compression test and neither one of them had good numbers. So let's head over to the table, look at the special tools we're going to need, then we're going to get this thing pulled apart. So let's go. All right, guys, normally I'd have a whole bunch of special tools laid out on this table, but guess what? We won't need any for this project. As far as the parts, well, we won't need any of those as well. So all you're going to need are just some basic hand tools, and I'm going to call out each one as I use it as we go through this process. So let me open up my toolbox, and let's go get this thing taken off. Now, as I said before, you can tell I've already been doing a little bit of work on this one. I've already got the upper cover removed, the covers over here, the intake silencers, all that's been removed. What I'm going to do next is disconnect anything that's going outside of the engine, whether it be fuel or battery or electrical connections. Get all of those disconnected, and at that point, we'll come around and get these lower covers, get those lower bolts removed, and lift that head off. Disconnect it from your battery first, then we'll go up top and take care of the other connections. Now, if you're actually doing this with your uh, outdrive still mounted to the transom of your boat, you pretty much want to go through the same process I'm doing. The, the couple of things that you'll have to do that I won't is to disconnect the fuel lines. Next, you need to go ahead and disconnect your main harness coming from the controls. Basically now we're just disconnecting any controls that are heading out away from the engine or sensors. As you're doing this, you may want to take a few pictures as you're going along to where you get them back in the same orientation when we're done. Now I'm just disconnecting the trim control wires. It'll be pretty easy to see where they go. When I pull off nuts and bolts like this, I usually just pop them out and then hand screw them back in just a little bit. We will probably end up taking all of the harness off of the engine. We're just not going to do that right now. I want to lift it off as a complete unit. And uh, then once we get it on the, uh, the engine stand, then we'll start breaking it down. What I'm doing over on this side is just unplugging regulator rectifier. Once again, if you were still connected to your boat, you would need to come through and disconnect your uh, throttle and shift cables. Of course, I don't have any connected right now, so it's not an issue for me. Now we've got all the cabling disconnected. Let's go ahead and pull these outer covers. Now as you're going through this process, as you're pulling off each of these bolts, it all seems simple right now. My advice is to go ahead and get you some Ziploc bags, throw them in there, label them. This is all simple right now, but in the several days that it's going to be, or weeks even, between when you're taking it apart and putting it back together, you're not going to remember every single one and it's going to drive you crazy. So go ahead and do yourself a favor, keep things organized as you're pulling them apart if you've got the space to do it, which I do. But if you don't, bag everything up, put it in a plastic container, you're good to go. Let's see if we can get them to separate now. <laughs> Somebody kind of put it back together up top, but didn't do a fantastic job, which is binding up everything else. There we go. <laughs> All right, guys, well, we knew somebody had already worked on this one before, and they had pulled the power head and <laughs> decided not to go any further. But when they put it back together, um, there's at least six bolts that I've counted that they uh, they missed. So we're going to get the rest of these uh, longer ones. I think they only had four that they put back in before they uh, sent it out to me. Once we get those longer bolts out, should be able to roll it over to the, uh, the hoist and get this thing lifted off. Here we're looking at an engine feel sorry for it. I do with this one. But guess what? We're going to figure it out and fix it. I 
I've got it connected up and ready to come off, but I'm about to make one serious mistake. I gotta pull the dipstick tube and the, well the dipstick and the dipstick tube because you know, of course it goes down in the oil reservoir. There we go. Now we can go ahead and lift off. We were about to make a mess out of it, but we didn't, we saved it. No? There you go. She has been decapitated. So let's get this out of the way. It is actually eaten, it looks like, into the actual block itself. And it's spewing oil out through the exhaust. That's why it's dripping all over the place. Well, all right, guys, that wraps this one up. Only thing I have to do now is just transfer the power head over to the engine stand after I attach an adapter to it. Well, listen, if you need any parts for your boat, why don't you come see us at boats.net and we can get you taken care of. If you like what you see and want to see me continue, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thanks for shopping here with us at boats.net and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.